Hi everybody, welcome back to Keep Evolving episode 6. It's such an amazing thing to have you guys six episodes later. Thank you so much for joining us every single time we record and we show with you. So today I am joined by Wendy Akini. Um, we've been with her in previous episodes. I'm sure you've seen her. And we have a guest today. His name is Mr. James Moria. We will allow him to introduce himself and just tell us a bit about what he does. So welcome, Mr. James. Thank you very much, uh, Wangeshi. Thank you for having me here. James Moria is my name. As I sh- you, you shared, I'm an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, mm-hmm. and an investor, social investor. I've been uh, in business for the last uh, 15 years now, wow. since I was in uh, campus. My first business, I founded it when I was uh, the last year of my campus life. Mm-hmm. When I was supposed to proceed for my attachment, that's when I formed my first business. Wow. Since then, I've been uh, able to start to have uh, 13 startups, seven of which have uh, not been very successful for various reasons, and the surviving ones are six as of today, mm-hmm. uh, which we, we consolidate together to call the Prudential Group. So I'm the team leader at uh, Prudential Group. Thank you. That is, wow, wow, <laughs> wow. 15 years. <laughs> That what? is a whole bank of experience and yeah. it's such an amazing thing to have you. Mm-hmm. So there are two things that you mentioned, maybe just to understand more. What is a serial entrepreneur and what is a social investor? Yeah. Uh, there is a difference between a businessman and an entrepreneur. Yeah. An entrepreneur is uh, driven by the social impact. And uh, that's why my core focus is, is on social entrepreneurship on the social impact, ah. positive social impact, mm-hmm. not just make, just making money, mm-hmm. not the commercial part of the yeah. business only. So, and it's a very deliberate uh, effort and, and something that uh, should be encouraged to the, to, the, to the entrepreneurs and the businessmen yeah. on the streets. Mm-hmm. The social impact really matters. It does. The customer really matters. Mm-hmm. Not just how much you'd be able to book yeah. by the end of the day in terms of uh, profits. Yeah. Okay, wow. that is really great. By now, I'm sure you have already known that we are discussing business, we are discussing entrepreneurship, yeah. and that is the topic that we are talking mm-hmm. about today. So um, just to bring it to the situation that we are in right now, um, just to understand better how to go around it, yeah. what, what are some of the things that you are finding challenging as an entrepreneur in this season? Yeah. Um. The situation that we are in now is uh, is quite interesting. Uh-huh. The pandemic is quite interesting. Yes, it is. It is uh, most of the people who look at it quite negatively, mm-hmm. but I think it presents a lot of opportunities as well. Mm-hmm. Opportunities in the business world, businesses, the existing businesses to adopt the new way of doing things, yeah. and opportunities for other potential entrepreneurs to venture into business. Yeah. But key questions you need to ask yourself is mm-hmm. if I will venture into new business, all I want my business to evolve to yeah. adopt the new uh, to the new norm. Mm-hmm. What problem will I be solving for my customer? Uh-huh. What is the problem statement? Mm-hmm. For example, now we have uh, limited uh, movements yeah. because of the lockdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you Talk about a new business. How can you be able to overcome or how, what value can you be able to offer mm-hmm. to your potential customers yeah. in regard to the uh, limited movement? Mm-hmm. Uh, is it free delivery at home? Mm-hmm. Is it uh, online services? Mm-hmm. Is it uh, remote services? Is it virtual services? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can't be able to meet with a customer uh, one-on-one, what opportunities does that present? And I think yeah. it's... Uh, huge opportunities. And this is what we have been looking forward to, that we can be able to do business in another new way, apart Mm -hmm. from the conventional way of physically meeting the customer, physically meeting the customer in an office. And uh, because as of today, I can tell you for a fact, like our office, we have realized, is too big within all that. It's too big now. It's not even very important to have an office. We need to meet the customer, but it doesn't necessarily have to, to meet the customer in the office. Yeah. Again, we need to ask this question. 
what customers are we targeting? Who, who do we want, do you want to address uh, this problem for? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I've seen another big mistake that mm-hmm. uh, entrepreneurs make. Mm-hmm. Trying to address all the customers at yeah. the same time. Because yeah. Yeah. even if you look at the supermarket uh, uh, businesses that we have today, there are some supermarkets that will slightly tell you the orientation, the type of customer they are looking for. Mm-hmm. Giving, a, giving an example, look at um, the new Quickmart branches, for example. Yeah. You can tell for sure they are targeting the middle class, yeah. exactly. the middle-aged mm-hmm. family, uh, family setups, yes. driving because mm-hmm. of the location of their branches. Yeah. Not just anybody. And, and the same challenge happens to, to us as we think about the new business. Yeah. What customer segment will we be addressing? Mm-hmm. Is it children? Is it uh, the youth? Yeah. The middle class? Mm-hmm. Uh, the aged? Mm-hmm. Uh, th- that kind of a thing. So from there then we can be able to address, uh, we can go back and address the problem. Ah. The problem statement that you had already identified. Yeah. Like, do you want to be delivering at home? Mm-hmm. So whom do you want to be delivering at home to? Yeah, exactly. What, does, what uh, areas do you want to address? Is it all the estates? Do you want to address uh, the high density? Mm-hmm. Do you want to address uh, low density estates? And which means will you be able to address them with? Is a boda boda enough to mm-hmm. do the delivery? Mm-hmm. Do you want to invest in other forms of, uh, of delivery channels? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I love um, that you brought in the aspects of segmentation. So like as an entrepreneur, segmentation is important. And I also love you said opportunities. Maybe as an entrepreneur, you can uh, delve into trends that you have had to implement in this season to make sure the businesses are going, yeah? Maybe just, you can tell us the trends that have worked yes. and the trends you may have implemented that didn't really work as you thought they would. Yeah. Ah, thank you. One of the things that, that, that comes in my mind is, is looking at the current industries and the way they have been disrupted by uh, this this pandemic, yeah, and the most exciting is the banking sector. Mm-hmm. It it has been proven that yes, uh, we used to say in the future uh, we might requ- we will require banking services, but we might not require the banks. Yeah, and I think the future is today wow. that yes, uh, the population requires uh-huh. banking services, yeah. but they don't necessarily require the physical bank the building, all yeah. the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. because. If, 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 if you look at uh, uh, the current situation, how many times would you find the customers walking in to a banking hall? Of it's very part- rare. Very rare. Yeah. Exactly. But of course, they are doing deposits, they are doing draws, yeah. they are doing loan applications, they are yeah. doing loan repayments, mm-hmm. they are doing money transfer, and all those kind of things that they need to do. Yeah. So that is one of the areas that, uh, that has been uh, really disrupted and, and, and have seen banks uh, mm-hmm. uh, responding to, to, to this new challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I shared the retail again, mm-hmm. we have been stuck in the conventional retail model mm-hmm. of a supermarket. Yeah. But with the limited movements, how how will the big, uh, huge, uh, conventional supermarket mm-hmm. be relevant moving forward? Probably, mm-hmm. the same so-called supermarket needs to be subdivided into twenty or thirty or fifty smaller units, mm-hmm. closer to the neighborhoods, yeah. closer yeah. to the customers, yeah. mm-hmm. that the customers can be able to walk in and walk out uh, conveniently at exactly. any given time. Yeah. And, and, and again on deliveries, must I walk into the supermarket for me to do the purchase? Yeah. No, no, not necessarily. Yeah. It yeah. has been proven that the supermarket, instead of investing on more space, they mm-hmm. should be investing on more capabilities to deliver to, to deliver. the customers. So transport, yes. yes. The education sector, mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is no classroom anymore, but the learning has to continue. Yeah, exactly. So how do you deal with that? Mm-hmm. That presents another uh, huge business opportunity. Before, yeah. most of the schools, especially the private schools, had invested in infrastructure. Mm-hmm. And infrastructure was their competitive advantage, that we have this number of buildings, we yeah. have this size of land. Today, it is no longer relevant. Yeah. Whatever is the mm-hmm. competitive advantage is what technology have you deployed exactly. to reach to your customers. The customers in this case being the students. Yeah. And before, uh, the parent was not a co-teacher. 
the parent was just a sponsor to the student yeah. to go yeah. through school. Yeah. Exactly. Today the parent is a co co parent, yeah. uh, co teacher. teacher. Yes. So yeah. how do you deal with that with yeah. the parent? How technologies or solutions or resources do you need to provide to the parent? And that presents huge business opportunities for the upcoming entrepreneurs mm-hmm. that they can look at the whole ecosystem of offering education and see which areas they can be able to plug in. Mm-hmm. Remember I shared the, uh, the issue about the customer segment. Exactly. So yes. what customers do you want to address? Is it the student? Is it the teacher? Mm-hmm. Or is it the parent? Mm-hmm. You need to decide which segment you will, you will address. Exactly. And know how, what problem statements are you solving? Yes. Yes. Wow. That that is it's that amazing. is very very insightful because it's yeah. not just enough to solve a problem. You need to find out who are you solving it for, so that you're not trying yeah. to do everything mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. And now that we've mentioned that, um, what are some of the challenges that come with these opportunities? For example, we've yeah. said that you know there are all these opportunities that are available, yeah. which is going to make it very easy for someone to want to solve all of these problems. Exactly. So what are some of the challenges that come with these opportunities that you need to think about mm-hmm. before you even say that I am going to do this, I am going to do that, I am mm-hmm. going to do the other. What are some of the challenges you need to have in mind? I, I think the biggest challenge remains how to model the business, what I call the business modeling yeah. uh, mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. Because part of my, of my mentorship uh, processes and, and classes. The biggest challenge I find with the new entrepreneurs is on business model. Mm-hmm. From uh, from point number one to point number ten, how will you be able to run your business yeah. from point one to number ten? Mm-hmm. Not just not that you have just developed an app, a mobile app, and people can be able to download it, they can be able to log in, but where is the business out of mm-hmm. it? Yeah. And I think that would be the biggest challenge coming up with the with the business model. Mm-hmm. Most of the young entrepreneurs, especially, yeah. will come up with a, an excuse that capital is is a challenge. I don't mm-hmm. think capital is a challenge. Mm-hmm. I think generating ideas that are bankable is the biggest challenge. Yeah. Because from my past experience, I have seen uh, investors coming on board to fund new businesses as far as they promise uh, good returns yeah. in the future or mm-hmm. in the near future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So capital might not be the biggest challenge, but coming up with a business model or an idea that is bankable, well-structured, mm-hmm. can be well-explained on paper, mm-hmm. uh, that would be the, the biggest challenge. Wow. Well, we will take a break and think about those details that mm-hmm. have been spoken about. Mm-hmm. We really hope you guys are writing notes and you are beginning to see that it's not all gloom sim- simply because we are locked down in all these things. There are exactly. a lot of opportunities to see that are still available. Yeah. yeah? Mm-hmm. So we'll be back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, Thank you so much for still staying with us. We are discussing businesses and entrepreneurship. We are discussing the how to go along with the whole entrepreneurship, uh, especially in the situation and in the pandemic that we are in currently and going forward. So, um, Mr. James, when we yes. began, you yeah. mentioned um, that yeah. there were some bits of your startups that you know did not do so well, and yeah. there's those that you were able to hold up until now. Mm. So, what are some of the things that you can say you did that? you know, brought the difference that made it possible for some to go down and, you know, for you to still maintain the others? Mm-hmm. It's a wrong story. I, I shared with you, um, I founded my first business in my last year of uh, my campus, campus life. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> you can imagine by then, um, I didn't have, uh, apart from the urge and the push and the, to, to, to do business, I didn't have much experience on how to yeah. do it. Yeah. And uh, experience is gained over time. Mm. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't just happen. Yeah. Mm. And one of my biggest challenges by then was not to think about the cost structure mm-hmm. and the revenue versus the revenue streams. Yeah. I'll be incurring these costs to do this business. Yeah. Myself as a cost as well. Exactly. Yeah. Because I need to live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what revenues will I be able to generate from the same? Mm. My first business, I developed um, 
a circle management system and you realize in the in the in the in the circle as a corporate they yeah. will not be buying every day probably i'll be able to sell to one customer after every one month after two mm-hmm. months yeah. then another three months i don't have a customer yeah. yeah but remember all this time there are costs that are being incurred yeah. i have a small office that i need to pay mm-hmm. I have electricity bills yeah. i have survival costs that i have to to, to to take care of yeah then the next customer comes after three months so yeah. the cost structure versus the revenue streams were mm-hmm. not well thought of yeah mm-hmm. then um to solve the problem two years later i invited some partners on board mm-hmm. again we i made another mistake the partnership model was not very well thought of uh, mm-hmm. was not very well documented mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i just invited my friends to come on board because they had some capital yeah, yeah. But uh, three years into the business, we realized we had a different vision altogether. Mm-hmm. For them, they were looking for a lifestyle business, yeah. a business that can pay their day-to-day bills. Mm-hmm. My vision was to grow the company to the next level. Yeah. Actually, to list it on uh, Nairobi Securities Exchange, mm-hmm. and we even applied yeah. uh, Empire Microsystems to list on the on the gems count. Mm-hmm. Although we were not successful, but that was a vision. Yeah. Yeah. But my partners were not. Uh, geared towards that same direction. Vision. So yeah. again, uh, that brought another failure, mm-hmm. and we had to restart it all over again. Mm-hmm. At some point, financial management was a problem mm-hmm. because the money has come in, but mm-hmm. we were not able to separate what is a business money yeah. and what is my salary. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that is one of the challenges I find with with the current em- entrepreneurs, yeah. not being able to separate business money and your money. Yeah. Whereas the business should only pay you a salary mm-hmm. at the end of the month yeah. as an employee of the business. Exactly. As a, as the owner of the business, you are privileged to determine how much probably the business should be paying you. Mm-hmm. But you should only earn a salary. So when you make a sale, that money should go to the bank. Yeah. Yeah. The bank account of the business, not mm-hmm. your personal bank account. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then come mid month, as you pay your other employees a salary, you should draw a salary as well. Mm-hmm. And all the other money that remains is business money. Yeah. Exactly. And you should not change your lifestyle to suit the available money business money in the account mm-hmm. so at some point in our fourth or fifth uh, year of business mm-hmm. that was another challenge yeah. uh, financial management mm-hmm. and again brought another failure hr management i remember one time we we were servicing a, a huge uh, Uh, telecommunication uh, engineering contract yeah. with one of the uh, leading telecommunication companies in Kenya yeah. and you had to hire more than 100 engineers yeah. but again we didn't figure out on how to do HR management properly uh-huh. so I was doubling as a managing director and probably as a HR manager mm-hmm. which does not work very well yeah. exactly. so we didn't hire a separate or an independent HR manager to oversee uh, mm-hmm. these people yeah. mm-hmm. And again, two years to the business, which was a big business of uh, laying uh, fiber optics for for that company, mm-hmm. we couldn't handle the pressure that was coming from the from the HR. Mm-hmm. The contract was supposed to be renewed by the third year, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, the customer could see the challenges that we are struggling with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because today, the engineers twenty have not reported. Tomorrow, ten have not oh, reported. Yeah. Yeah. The other day, they are protesting. They need the salary increment mm-hmm. because there was no formal way of engaging them. Mm-hmm. We just had a business, an assignment for them, we invited them, they started working, mm-hmm. but over time we couldn't uh, sustain the engagement that we, we had because it was not formal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that contract was not renewed because of that. And that brought another failure. Yeah. Uh, I can go on and on yeah, because yeah, the challenges yeah. are many. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm available to guide yeah. the upcoming entrepreneurs on the areas that have, have that they should they should not uh, uh, they should not fall into because mm-hmm. i've gone through the same journey yes mm-hmm. i have experienced it yeah i would uh, share that knowledge with anybody who would wish to hear yeah. Yeah. the areas that they need to take care of not yeah. to fall into the same uh, pitfalls that i yeah. did yeah Yes. Wow. I, I I believe that that's what yeah. he meant when he was talking about business yeah. models, you know, exactly. yeah. being able to separate you. And I think that's actually something that very yeah. many young entrepreneurs struggle with. Exactly. Being able to separate to your um money as an individual from the business money. So mm-hmm. many a times you will make a sale and get excited about it and pay yourself and all the... yourself away. <laughs> and then you don't even have the money yeah. to restock next time. I yeah. am speaking from experience. I <laughs> 
So <laughs> it's, it's a, like as you speak, yeah. I am also learning because it's yeah. like, wow, exactly. that is actually a, an existing problem. Yeah. 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 And he mentioned a lot of things we need to watch. You know, the business model, the financial bit, the HR bit. I'm getting yeah. the aspect of roles. Yeah. You can't do everything. You yes. can't be the owner, the HR, the manager. Mm. You have to, you know, outsource. Mm. Yeah. And as we continue to learn all this, maybe you can just tell us because uh, we have very many young people who want to be entrepreneurs. They're aspiring. But there's the issue of my parents do not support that I aspire to be an entrepreneur. They're still in the mindset of after I finish campus, I have to go into the job market. I will get a job. I will work. Maybe how can you just encourage parents to support the young people's dreams, to just let them fly? They're going to make mistakes. But, you know, you have yeah. to let a bird fly, yeah? Yeah, true. Yeah. I think um, time have changed mm -hmm. that... Um, the young professionals are not just focused on how to get the next exactly. uh, parastato job yeah. or the next uh, employment or yeah. the next NGO and yeah. this kind of things. Yeah. The mindset have shifted mm -hmm. and, um, and venturing into business is one of the equal opportunities that these young mm -hmm. professionals can venture into. Yeah. And the parent has a, a, a big role to play mm -hmm. in, in, in encouraging these uh, young professionals yeah that business is still an, an equal opportunity that they can be able to venture into. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I say this uh, many often, that failure is part of success. Mm -hmm. Until they fail, they cannot uh, appreciate success. Mm -hmm. And the, the unfortunate part of the, the stories that we read in magazines, the stories that are online on YouTube about uh, successful entrepreneurs, yeah. Literally, talk, they talk about very little about their failure yeah. parts. They yeah. talk about the success. I started this business when I was 20. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was 30, I was uh, doing was big making, business. Yes. I was mm -hmm. yeah. booking billions of shillings. Mm -hmm. I think we need to focus more on not just the success part, yeah. mm -hmm. but on the journey. Exactly. And the journey includes uh, failing. Yes, yeah. And the day they will fail mm -hmm. is the day they will start succeeding. Wow. So as a parent, yeah. uh, you need to encourage your the youth, the young mm -hmm. professionals, to, to venture into business. Mm -hmm. Not fearing the uncertainty too much, yeah. but rather daring to venture into, into business. Exactly. And again, I'll call upon the parents to mm -hmm. act as investors into these businesses. Mm -hmm. It is good that you have uh, taken, you have invested in these uh, young professionals in their education. Yeah. But it is uh, equally good to in, to invest into their in their businesses yeah. and professionally being an investor mm -hmm. that the parent is expecting a return mm -hmm. on investment not yeah. just uh, dishing out money yeah. as yeah. grants mm -hmm. but uh, lead investments mm -hmm. can start as an angel investor yeah i want to venture into uh, into business x mm -hmm. my working capital requirement is probably 100,000 or 200,000 yeah. to start off yeah. As a parent, you'll provide uh, 100,000 or 150,000 mm -hmm. into that venture. Mm -hmm. And this is my expected uh, return on investment. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't come, then you behave like any other investor. The next time, I will not put up more money into exactly. your business. Yeah. Yeah. But if you get a return out of it, you should get encouraged to continue yes. doing it. Yeah. Again, uh, the parent to reduce the pressure on these young professionals. <laughs> It takes time mm -hmm. to run a successful business. Yeah. And I tell my class that uh, to how to gauge a successful business, mm -hmm. you need to look at it from three to five years, mm -hmm. not within one to two years, and yeah. you are already looking for success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But by the fifth year, you should be ready to look at backwards and joining the dots backwards yeah. and looking at uh, where you did well and where you didn't do very well mm -hmm. and the improvement areas mm -hmm. and, and, and then the next five years how to, to take the business to the next level by the fifth year after the fifth year yeah. Yeah. not looking at very short term of one to yeah. two years and uh, you're already becoming impatient that yeah. uh, success is, is not knocking you at all yeah. exactly. be more patient yeah. and uh, for you to go to the next level you need to run in the long term mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we overrate the short-term effects of uh, our activities. Mm -hmm. What will happen in the next or two years? Mm -hmm. But we are the long-term effects of, of, of what we have started, mm -hmm. like 10 years. Yeah. If you do it from now, mm -hmm. in the next 10 years, what will happen? And, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, is, is, is more desi desirable for the parent to yeah. encourage 
the youths to be more patient with themselves yeah. and, and take time. Yeah. Uh, two years is such a short time. Short time yeah. Five years is more ideal. Mm-hmm. Ten years is the most ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So we, we, we are gathering that it's two-way. Yes. You know? So even as we are in the homes and mm-hmm. going through this season, we need to get to that place where we actually sit down and go like, okay, yes. Yeah. What ideas do you have? Mm-hmm. How can we help you? And also, how can we discipline you to actually go forth with the idea? For exactly. even the parent to be the one who's pushing you, I invested, yes. you know, and you know, such kind of a <laughs> yeah. thing. It, it, it yeah. will really be helpful. Mm-hmm. And um, this, I think, is very um, necessary, mm-hmm. especially right now when we are hearing so many of the yeah. young people being laid off from work yeah. and. These are things that they can actually take up because mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that because you've been laid off, then yeah, now all hope yeah. is lost. You can yeah. always try something out. Mm-hmm. Um, just one last thing. You mentioned something about classes. Yes. Um, yeah. Could you, yeah. Could you <laughs> expand shed more light yes. on that? <laughs> um, these are voluntary classes from, from the potential uh, ah. entrepreneurs, the upcoming entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay. We just... Uh, do arrangement with them. Uh-huh. Uh, we sit down, we look at uh, uh, their ideas, uh-huh. we validate their business model, wow. we uh, share with them uh, what is uh, what the improvement areas, mm-hmm. the areas they need to, to work on, mm-hmm. purely for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. As, 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 um, as my return to, to the society. To the yeah. society. To the yeah. society. Yes, sir. yes. Wow. Voluntary classes. So young people, we have no excuses, yeah? yeah? We can't say that we haven't been encouraged. Just maybe as the last thing, maybe yes. an encouraging word mm-hmm. you'd give to us on in terms of entrepreneurship as we close. Yeah. Um, entrepreneurship is exciting. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're solving a real problem uh, affecting people. Uh-huh. What I call uh, innovating for the citizen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looking around looking at the problem, uh, the, the areas they are, they are struggling on, mm-hmm. where the society is uh, struggling on, mm-hmm. like probably water, electricity, yeah. you know, the social amenities, mm-hmm. and getting a solution out of the same. Mm-hmm. And apart from just getting a solution, getting a commercial value out of that solution. Mm-hmm. So it's very exciting mm-hmm. and it's very encouraging that most of the young professionals to look into that direction. Yeah. And the motivation should not be just money. Mm-hmm. No, money is, 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 is a byproduct of your hard work, yeah. Yeah. byproduct of your innovation. Yeah. And again, innovation does not necessarily mean coming up with new ideas all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It can mean improving an existing process. Yeah, exactly. uh, that is part of innovation. Yesterday people were doing this, and today you are introducing another new way of doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that is part of innovation. It doesn't have to be new. Mm-hmm. And innovation doesn't have to be within the technology space. Yes. Mm-hmm. Technology is just one of the industries that mm-hmm. you can innovate in. But there are other industries that you can be able to innovate in, including yeah. the oldest of the industries. You can be able to come up yeah. with, uh, with new innovations. So I'm Nichabu on uh, james.moria at gmail.com. James.moria at gmail.com. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us and just discussing with us. And um, we have learned a lot. We really appreciate this time. You've had, you can reach him at james.moria at gmail.com. Yeah. And you've heard about the volunteering classes. That is really good of you. We really yeah. appreciate it. And we are so grateful that you have joined us. Uh, remember to like, to share, to subscribe, to tell us what you think, you know, share your experience with us as well. And yeah. let us know how we can continue to have these conversations in the family and even at the point where we are opened up to other spaces outside yeah. of the family. Till next time, see you guys. Thank you.